Welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot, only podcast of its kind on the interwebs. I'm your host, Colin Jason. I have Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. In this podcast, I'm going to be talking about quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the wonderful grammar technology with the mathematical interface brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller. Now, actually, while I may talk about that technology specifically, more than likely I'll be concentrating on periphery topics through the lens of correct sentence structure. One such topic that I'd like to share my thoughts on today is the topic of military psychological operations, more commonly referred to as PSYOPs which is probably by a lot of people's, a lot of folks' estimation, the most important sector or branch. Now, it's it's not a branch. It's the most important arm of the military, I guess you could say. Because if you read their code of intent or however you want to say it, like what, what it's for, what the purpose of the PSYOPs sector is, is to control you and me and the entire world. Targets foreign and otherwise, which foreign means, I guess, people who are not uh, on U.S. soil and, and otherwise would be the people who are on U.S. soil. And I think Right off the bat, I want to touch on exactly why people don't feel normally that this is any kind of threat to them or that this has anything to do with them. Because even though, even though the majority of folks out there don't trust the government, their government, the majority of folks out there know that the government has lied and continues to lie about certain things. They know that the government hides things from them. They complain about the government or things related to the government, like the IRS and the Treasury, Department of Treasury and things like that. And they don't agree with those things and they feel like they're being ripped off and such and such and so on and so forth, even though they know all those things, they still, in the back of their mind, most folks trust their government. They feel that their government has their best interests in heart, at heart. <laughs> Which, that's, I guess, assuming that the government has a heart. Because supposedly the government is we the people by the people. Which is the biggest load of hogwash one of the biggest loads of hogwash ever uttered in history. So that's what this premise is, that people don't really take military, or the concept of military psychological operations very seriously because they don't feel like it applies to them. That, yeah, it applies to that people, those people over there. Yeah, we're going to target those people because they're the enemy. For example, the... LGBT, LMNOP, Skittles people, which I stay as far away from that as I possibly can. Um, <clears throat> think about that, for example. If you can't see the military psyops in that, then you better go to the doctor and get an eye test. The same thing with the, the Trump trainers the extreme right, conservatives, same thing. There is a flavor for everyone out there. And the quantum grammar contingent is no exception. Because I was asking myself this question after looking into a document called Task Force Sheepdog written by a psychological operations officer, Sergeant Robert Horton. 
And I began thinking, wow, you know, you got with, with the quantum grammar, you have Freemasonry, in, you know, involved in it through the self-professed 92nd degree Mason, colon David Eiffelwin, colon Miller. Whether you believe he was 92nd degree or not, it's not important. The point is, I'm 99.9% .9 sure the guy was a Mason, no matter what his degree was. His father was a Mason, his mother was an Eastern star, so he came from that type of background. And you can look these things up. It's public knowledge. So you have Freemasonry, and then you have also in on November 11th, 2016, this paper, Task Force Sheepdog, was published. And it's a very long, drawn-out, dramatic outline of a story. It's basically a per, a uh, an opinion on history. It's a modification of history. Who knows what the actual history is? But it's certainly a modification of it, because it's setting the stage for what Colin Russell hyphen J Colin Gould was to do a few years later. It was basically literally constructing the platform from which Russell J. Gould was going to speak from it began on November 11th, 2016, because a year later in 2017, all he was, Russell was doing the, the quote unquote military court martial of Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, which as a side note, Russell J. Gould has never been in the military. And number two, Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller was never in the military. Adjective, adjective, pronoun David Whit Miller was in the military, but not the punctuated David Whit Miller. Quantum grammar didn't even exist when Miller was in the military. So that whole thing was a farce. Anyways, if you watch that video, you can see Russell sitting at a desk outside and behind him is a heavyset individual holding an automatic rifle, which you don't see their face. And in the video, Russell is, well, well, let's say you take that video of Russell and watch his face, watch his expressions, watch what he's saying, how he delivers things, and then also pay attention to the edits to the video, because the video is heavily edited. I was actually fortunate enough to see the, the unedited version, which was initially published on Sergeant Robert Horton's wife, Pamela's YouTube channel. That video was sent to me by Russell J. Gould, actually, through an email. I got to see the original, unedited. And the most remarkable thing was, at the end of the, the mock court martial Russell finishes what he's saying and then he just stops and looks at the camera and he's just sort of looking blankly at the camera and then you hear someone off to the side whisper in a very loud whisper strike the gavel and then Russell hits the the Masonic hammer on the on the tape which it is a Masonic hammer because it's a Masonic system Russell lifts the Masonic tool and strikes the gavel and the video ends. Then later on, they uh, edited that part out, the whisper, strike the cavil. They edited that out, and you can see the cut where Russell's staring at the camera, and then all of a sudden he strikes the gavel. And then after that, they add on an interview where some individual is acting as if he's some, you know, unbiased reporter asking Russell questions about David Wynn Miller and about David's cases and and uh, again, to point out, in that interview, the interviewer says something like, well, David Winmiller, blah, 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 and then Russell says, yes, Colin David I from Wynn, Colin Miller. So he makes sure that we know that he's talking about the punctuated David Winmiller, which again, lends credence to the mockery of what this was, because Colin David I from Wynn, Colin Miller was never in the military. There is no record of a punctuated David Wynn Miller in the military. 
this is at the time when Russell is working with Sergeant Robert Horton, who is a officer of the psychological operations sector of the military. Keep this in mind, this whole thing. You have the Freemasonry, and then you have the psychological operations, and then you have correct sentence structure. The whole purpose of PSYOPs is to control the mindset of just about every, every possible sector of society, every flavor, whether you're left, right, whether you're libertarian, whether you're Green Party, whether you're atheist, whether you're deist, theist, monotheist, polytheist, it doesn't matter what sector you're in, they have a program directed at you and your family. If there is a grassroots movement that is pure from the ground up, they will find a way to infiltrate it and get a little poison in there to disrupt it so that there's distrust and discord. They will sow the apple of discord in there and break it apart if they need be. Like the anti-war movement of the 60s, right? I don't know, I wasn't there. But from what I can see, it appears to me, my perception, that that started at, from a pure place of people who did not want any more killing, any more fighting, any more invading of foreign countries. They wanted the, the military industrial complex to keep their noses out of foreign countries and only keep the interests here. Get out of Vietnam. Stop messing with Korea. So on and so forth. It started from a, a pure place of people wanting peace. But then the psychological operations came in and infiltrated it. And then suddenly, that movement of people who were peaceful and claimed to be peaceful and, and were pure in their volition, all of a sudden you got people coming in there who are now introducing, psych, you know, psych, um, what do you call those things? <laughs> like acid and psychedelic drugs and things like that and uh, into the movement plus promiscuous sex. Uh, love-ins, orgies, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with type of mentality. And, you know, get high, the Grateful Dead, the, the Merry Pranksters, they infiltrated that pure anti-war movement with drugs and sex and totally obliterated it and ruined its credibility. And therefore, you know, I mean, the rest is history. You had a, for whatever reason, you know, during the 50s, 40s and 50s, the times were tough after uh, World War I. But then by the, you know, after World War II, yeah, then um, you had this thing called the nuclear family, which is... Now that I'm thinking about it, you know, again, I wasn't there, so I can't really speak on it as any type of authority. I'm just giving you my opinions on this thing. <laughs> you know, the nuclear family after the supposed nuclear bomb went off, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So you got this thing called the nuclear family, but you got the, the guy that goes to work, you know, for eight hours and comes home. And you got, you know, leave it to beaver, I guess you would say, you know, the leave it to beaver thing. You got the strong family, which, you know, it, it is an idealistic concept. Who knows whether it is actually ideal or not, but it was an idealistic concept. A very strong, stable household. Children, stay-at-home mom, father supporting. And so then, for whatever reason... certain powers wanted that to dissolve. So they began introducing, you know, women's rights. Again, rights are a fiction concept, folks. 
If you're going to participate with rights, if you're going to say, I need to fight for my rights, you know, that means that they're given to you by someone else, by another authority. You've given someone else authority over you. You've lost already if you participate in the concept known as rights. And if you're going to say unalienable rights given by a god, well, the only way you can do to, to enforce something like that is to have a god come down and enforce those rights for everybody because there is no enforcer. The only enforcer is the government with the guns and the clubs, and they're the ones that give you your rights if you so choose to participate with that type of concept. You know what I'm saying is true. Think about it. And if you do think about it, then you'll know why I don't participate with the concept of God as a fact. Because it can't be certified and there is... The only authority that God has is what you give it. What you give it. Other than that, there is no authority. It's all on you. Anyways... That's neither here nor there. So then feminism came in. And that destroyed the nuclear family. Now, I'm not going to go into the civil rights thing. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> maybe I will. Because I just it popped into my head. I just watched a show called King of Harlem. It was recommended to me with For the actor Forrest Whitaker in it. I like Forrest Whitaker. I remember seeing him in a movie called The Crying Game, which, if you want to see a weird movie, check that movie out. Check it out. That goes, that's way before the Skittles, LGP, BT, LMNOP type of uh, mentality, you know, extreme leftist ideology. It's way before that, but it is a precursor of it. It has it, that movement has its roots in movies like The Crying Game, which is again part of PSYOPs. Part of PSYOPs, part of getting people used to the idea of this, that, or the third. Anyways, so this movie, you're this series, King of Harmony, is supposedly based on history, based on Bumpy Johnson, who is a gangster. And he was allegedly friends with Malcolm X. And, you know, you have other mob guys in there, Chin Gigante, so on and so forth, Colombo crime family, Genovese, all that stuff, in New York. Now, it's supposedly based on history. But one, <laughs> the thing I found really hilarious about this show is that, and it, and it almost made me stop watching it, was that there was a story arc in the movie where the daughter of the gangster Chin Gigante, his daughter Stella, which is not a real person at all. They just made her up. Chin had many uh, children, I guess, and none of them were named Stella as far as I know. But in the, in the show, Stella, Chin Gigante, the mafia crime boss's daughter, Italian, uh, is interested in a black musician. And this is back, you know, in Motown. Historically, Motown was, was booming and things like that. And it was supposed to be a commentary on the way blacks were treated in society as a whole and then, you know, in the music industry specifically and how the mafia was in on that as well. Of course, her relationship with this guy was, a, was forbidden. Anyways, this musician that she's interested in, this black musician who's playing a guitar, writes a song. And it, the song is the theme of the show. It's the theme song of the show. But supposedly back in whatever year this was, in the mid to late 60s, this song is supposed to be from that era. And in the song, the lyrics use the word woke. I about spit out my coffee and smashed the TV through the wall when I heard that. I was like, oh wow, this is a leftist propaganda machine using the face of a historical, you know, intent. Like, it's the intention supposedly was to tell history, recount history, a historical drama, but then it's infused with leftist wokeism. 
Again, PSYOPs. And I bet no one, not one individual who watched that show even caught that. I will bet dollars to donuts no one caught that. But I'm a little different than most people. I look at things very, very critically. And of course I miss a lot of stuff. I think, you know. But I do catch a lot of stuff that most people don't catch. So again, I'm just giving you this as an example of how PSYOPs are literally, has literally infiltrated every, is, does infiltrate, has infiltrated every area, every aspect of entertainment, fashion, etc. The sexualization of children. Younger and younger children are becoming sexualized, the way they dress. You know, 10, 11, 12 year olds are wearing skimpy clothes, makeup. They're given electronic devices and um, given access to all manner of despicable and disgusting things on the internet and their parents are not home. Why aren't the parents home? Because they're both working. Because they have to. Because they have to pay the bills. And the electronic device has become the babysitter. If you doubt what I'm saying, I will bet you, again, I will bet you dollars to donuts, anyone who has a toddler, a baby, a child, you walk in to a house when they're sitting during the day, when people are working or whatever, and trying to get things done, and you get to the dinner table, the, the child is going to be either in front of the TV or have an iPad in front of them or a phone in front of them while they're mindlessly eating or drinking or whatever they're doing. Guaranteed. Dollars to donuts. The electronic device has become the babysitter. And we are seeing the results of this in society. So what I'm articulating here, folks, I'm trying to articulate to you the massive scope of military psychological operations. Society as a whole, the knowledge cultivation level has been so weakened. The attention span has been so degraded that it's impossible for anyone to watch a video that's three minutes or longer. Almost impossible. In one sitting. Literally. It's impossible for someone to sit down and read a book anymore. A young person. It's just not going to happen. We're looking for audio books now so we can multitask. And what happens when you multitask? You're not giving 100% of your attention to what you're doing. You're dividing that up. So therefore, you're not getting all the benefit of each thing or giving your full 100% effort to each thing, you're dividing that up and therefore you're weakened. That's just the way it is these days. And I know people, I used to look at people who could multitask like, man, you are, that's amazing because I, I could never do that. You know, and people, the thing that they call autism, which interestingly enough begins with AU, same as authority, but I digress. They develop this terminology autism, you know, in a spectrum of autistic uh, levels to describe various conditions of state where an individual can only concentrate on one thing at a time, but that one thing they're concentrating on gets 100% laser light focus and they are exceptional in their abilities to do that. Like mathematics or, or like the story of the child that was flown in a helicopter above London and looked down over the city, and the minute they got home, they can drew with pencil an exact replica to scale of London from memory, and they were diagnosed as autistic. So, in you know, autistic children in school, they're given the stigma of that name of having having for some reason some sort of disadvantage rather than being labeled as unique simply labeled as unique with unique educational needs they're labeled as disadvantaged in a way and then they're fed amphetamine salts i.e. known as ritalin 
or whatever it is because they're excitable they can't sit still they don't want to sit in a seat for an hour and listen to some mouth talk about stupid shit they don't even care about have to raise their hand to go to the restroom or whatever they don't want to do that they want to go play they want to be active they want to they have boundless energy but no but no they're being imprisoned tied down with an ankle bracelet to a seat not literally figuratively folks come on come on you know what i'm saying being trained <clears throat> to be good little worker bees and actually i don't want to use the word worker bees. strike that from the record your honor that's an insult to the bees to be good little worker slaves so that you do your job, whatever that job is, to feed the machine. And then what you do for entertainment is watch stupid, mindless videos on TikTok. And, uh, or play video games or whatever it is you're doing. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with watching TikTok videos or playing video games. What I'm saying is that children, 9, 10, 11 years old, 5, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, should not be spending five hours a day looking at a computer screen or a phone screen or an electronic device screen. I'm saying that children like that should not be forced to sit down for eight hours a day and be treated like prisoners the same way prisoners are treated. Locked down 23 and 1. I mean, it's not a far step away from that. And the food is definitely on par with that. <laughs> Prison food in the school cafeterias. So to bring it back to correct sentence structure, folks, I feel like individuals like um, colon Mark hyphen lowercase k, Kishon colon Christopher, and colon Russell hyphen j, colon Gould are two sides of the same coin. I've been saying this for years. I'll say it again. Two sides of the same coin. You got the left, you got the right. It's pretty obvious who the left is. That would be Mark. It's pretty obvious who the right would be. That would be Russell. Both claiming the same thing about the flag, about the grammar. Neither one of them using correct grammar. Both of them presenting a paradigm where they are the leaders. They are the authorities. You have to go through them. How is it, you know, you cannot come to me except through him. You know, you can't get to the Father except through the Son. This type of mentality. You can't get to freedom except through Russell. And the modifications to the whole system that David Wood Miller developed is proof of that. And that's not to say that it wasn't crooked from the beginning, because David Wood Miller was a Freemason. But if you listen to his story of why he developed what made him rack his brain to come up with the mathematical interface on grammar, it had to do with the legal system and what the legal system did. And he, as a Freemason, I mean, I don't think he ever was a member of the bar, but he certainly was a brother of the craft, just like the men in the black dresses that sit on the third plane in those foreign vessels in dry dock. So he never really was in any, you know, danger. And then if you look at uh, Russell J. Gould coming into the picture as a young kid, taken under the wing of this free mas Masonic master, and then you look at the things that Russell supposedly went through, you could actually, from a certain angle, look at it as though Russell was manipulated and continues on a cycle of manipulation from different parties that come in and out of his life and direct the course of it. Because that November 11th, 2016 tax, task force sheepdog paper written by Sergeant Robert Horton is the foundation of the platform that Russell J. Gould stands on now. He is now the the God King of his construct. And no one can get to him unless they go through Rachel Dara Prince. 
Some people even wonder if he even really exists anymore because no one ever sees him. Now, there are talks that he does hold seminars and stuff from time to time. And there is some leaked footage of that, but it's never in the public. It's always behind a paywall, which tells you something. Back in the day, Colin David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller had his own website that he created himself. He put his own personal phone number, his cell phone number, his home phone number, his email address, his address, his freaking home address he would put on his website. He would direct people. Just look up on YouTube, David Wynn Miller videos. Hundreds of videos were there. Everything was out there. He said, literally, do not send your live life claim to me. Just use the template, create your own claim of the live life. Do your thing. Don't send it to me. And then all of a sudden when he dies, it's a complete 180. And Russell J. Gould has completely modified everything about the construct and even demonized bad mouth and slander David Wynn Miller. Those of you who are new to this probably are not aware of it. But if you do a little digging, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And to bring it back to the original topic, it is a PSYOP, a psychological operations, meant to play on everyone's emotions, their logic, and everything. Like the medical situation, pandemic that happened the past few years, definitely went a long ways towards erasing logic from society's minds. People cannot think critically anymore they're expected to just do as they're told even though they know the pharmaceutical industry has a vested interest in illness they don't make money unless you're sick they don't make money unless you're in pain they don't that's how they make their billions but yet you trust them and you'll put into your body whatever they say in order to have the quote-unquote right to travel or go here or go there. The authority that you give them is by consent. Literally, if everyone stood up and said, no, we don't like you, You're, you suck, get out, that would literally manifest itself. But that would never happen. People are just too... They, as I said in the beginning, you know, the knowledge, the, the education system is just whack. And it's just going to be interesting to see the way things play out in the next few years. But outside of all that and the psyops that have infiltrated the quantum grammar sector, which actually probably has been there from the beginning, you can take out of you know, a bunch of coal, a lump of coal, a pile of coal, you can take a diamond out of there because there are diamonds in there if you work hard enough to find them. And that diamond is the pureness of the technology of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And I've said this again and again and again. The grammar technology itself is pure. What you do with it is up to you. It has no bearing on the technology itself. If you learn the technology, especially as it's taught on my YouTube channel with almost 900 videos on here, maybe even over 900 videos, or if you take workshops from me, if you teach it, I'm sorry, if you learn it in that form, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There is no drama, no religion, no beliefs. I don't ask you to believe anything. Because... I can certify everything I say to you, and you can certify everything I say with regards to grammar mechanics if you take the time to study. And I've made sure of that. I've set up my platform on a solid grammatical base so that anyone who wants to take the time to learn it can learn it on my channel for free if they want to. Or if they so choose, they can contact me in the confidential at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and take some workshops and fast track their learning. Either which way, it's not hidden. 
there is no, as far as I know, psyops infiltration into my programs because, and I use the word program in a fiction sense, in my performances, simply because I'm the only person here. I've never been in the military, although I did try to get in the military when I was like 19 or 20, but that didn't turn out. And I'm not a Freemason, although I have been approached by Freemasonry in the past to join. Um, so I'm none of those things. I'm not affiliated with anyone except for my tutor, Raven, and uh, my best student, Colin Ricardo, Colin Marseille. So I'm kind of a lone individual out here. So that, that's about what I can offer you. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10- to 15-minute video consultation between you and me, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.